let's take a look at the cosmos. The Big Bang Theory states that about 13.7 billion years ago, all the matter in the universe was concentrated into a single incredibly tiny point. This began to enlarge rapidly in a hot explosion and is still expanding today. Therefore, the origin and evolution of the universe is the Big Bang model. So, the big point there is the origin and evolution of the universe is the Big Bang, and that 13.7 billion years ago is also a good number to know. The Earth orbits the Sun while the moon orbits the earth. The earth also rotates about its axis once every 24 hours, making an earth day 24 hours long. The moon also rotates about its axis. However, due to gravity, the moon's rotation is such that the same side of the moon always points towards the earth. Since the moon orbits the earth approximately once every 28 days, and since the same side of the moon always points towards Earth, the moon only rotates once every 28 days. Another way of saying that is that a moon day is actually 28 Earth days long. Which is kind of crazy. Another effect of Earth's rotation is that we have a cycle of daylight and darkness approximately every 24 hours. This is called a day. As Earth rotates, the side of Earth facing the Sun experiences daylight, and the opposite side, which of course faces away from the Sun, experiences darkness or nighttime. Since the Earth completes one rotation in about 24 hours, this is the time it takes for a complete one day, one day night cycle. And we also want to look at the seasons. Seasons are caused by a 23.5 degree tilt of Earth's axis of rotation and Earth's yearly revolution around the Sun. This results in one part of the Earth being more directly exposed to rays from the Sun than the other part. That the part tilted away from the Sun experiences a cool season, while the part tilted toward the Sun experiences a warm season. Seasons change as the Earth continues its revolution, causing the hemisphere tilted away from or towards the Sun to change accordingly. When it is winter in the northern hemisphere, it is summer in the southern hemisphere, and vice versa. A solar eclipse occurs when the Moon passes directly between the Earth and the Sun. This casts a shadow on the Earth and blocks our view of the Sun. A total solar eclipse occurs when the Moon's shadow completely blocks the Sun. When only a portion of the Sun is out of view, it is called a partial solar eclipse. Solar eclipses are rare events that usually only last a few minutes. That is because the Moon's shadow only covers a very small area on Earth, and Earth is turning very rapidly. As the sun is covered by the moon's shadow, it will actually get cooler outside. I'm going to look at tides for a minute. If you're not familiar with this, this is kind of interesting. Tides are the regular rising and falling of Earth's surface water in response to gravitational attraction from the moon and sun. The moon's gravity causes the oceans to bulge out in the direction of the moon. In other words, the moon's gravity is pulling upwards on Earth's water, producing a high tide. On the other side of the Earth, there is another high tide area produced where the moon's pull is weakest. As the Earth rotates on its axis, the areas directly in line with the moon will experience high tides. Each place on Earth experiences changes in the height of the water throughout the day as it changes from high tide to low tide. There are two high tides and two low tides each tidal day. Crazy, huh? Okay, let's look at planets. Planets are generally divided into two main types. 
There's large, low-density giant planets and smaller, rocky terrestrials. There are eight planets in the solar system. In order of increasing distance from the sun, the four terrestrials are Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Then the four giant planets are Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Jupiter and Saturn are known as the gas giants, while Uranus and Neptune, Neptune are known as the ice giants. Okay, we need to be generally aware of the Milky Way. So the Milky Way is a galaxy. It contains our solar system. That's really the big part they need to know. Some of the details though, the Milky Way is a barred spiral galaxy with a diameter between 100,000 and 180,000 light years. The Milky Way is estimated to contain somewhere between 100 and 400 billion stars. There are probably at least 100 billion planets in the Milky Way. And the very center of the Milky Way is marked by an intense radio source named Sagittarius A, which is likely to be a supermassive black hole. Okay, so what does that mean? What is a black hole? We also need to know white dwarfs. A black hole is a region of space-time exhibiting such a strong gravitational effect that nothing, not even particles and electromagnetic radiation, such as light, can escape from inside it. The theory of general relativity predicts that a sufficiently compact mass can deform space-time to form a black hole. Um, white dwarfs is what stars like the Sun become after they have exhausted all of their nuclear fuel. Near the end of its nuclear burning stage, this type of star expels most of its outer material, creating a planetary nebula. Only the hot core of the star remains.